Yeah. So I help people out as much as I can when it comes to like being a dad or like, you know, like one of my good buddies is about to have a little boy mm -hmm. and like, you know, you were at the baby shower. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And so phenomenal like, baby shower. Yeah. Hey, pool tip. Man. Yeah. Yeah. It's a fucking refrigerator full of beers. I'm yeah. Like, Hell yeah. Wow. Yeah, baby shower. Little chips like everywhere. It. I was like, yeah, and no, I like that. Just sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Hey, that plate of fruit, I was allergic to some of the cherries, but it was worth it. Like, yeah, it was worth it, bro. Get my <laughs> it was worth it, bro. Uh, <laughs> but like, he, he didn't know, like, he called me, man. And like, mm -hmm. I remember him calling me and being like, yeah, my girlfriend's pregnant. And I was just like, oh, fuck. Like, mm -hmm. well, welcome. I, was, I mean, I think one of the first things I told him, I was just like, well, dude, like, have all the fucking fun you can for the next nine months. Yeah. Not in a bad way. Like, don't yeah. go fucking destroying your life. Yeah, having fun, but like, get it out of your system, dude. That's the best advice I give to any new father that's mm -hmm. coming along. If you and the chick aren't together, get all of that out of your system. And if y'all are together, mm -hmm. get all that shit out of your system in a healthy, respectful way. Yeah, because once that kid comes, dude, you're you need to be on top of all of that. Yeah, doctors' appointments. Don't let her just take the baby to the doctors. Don't let her just deal with all it. Don't let her deal with. Mm -hmm signing all the papers, doing all the documents. Like, don't do that. Because a lot of women will do that because they're expecting to have to do that. Yeah. But it's like, you need to step up and be like, no, I can handle this part. I'll deal with this part. You yeah. need to. That's all out of I like getting to hear about my friend's life for the sections that I wasn't quite aware of or who they've had to be since then. That's That's yeah. nice. Mm -hmm. It sucks though that I didn't get to be there for you. But oh, I mean, oh, if you needed yeah. me there, you would have just sent me up, be like, "Hey, yeah, I need you." <laughs> oh, that's uh, I got you. What's up? That's, nah, that's all good. Say less. You got a nice bike, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And he came in with that. It was all black. The bar looks strong. It's like that bar is actually a dirt bike handlebar. Is it? Yeah. That joint. That joint looks solid. I was looking. I, was I like, think it's Renthal or something. It's a dirt bike brand. Yeah, I was like, you you could get some cranking on that. Yeah, I'm a big ass dude. So yeah, I need like shit that's not gonna break on me while I'm riding. Mm -hmm. How's how's it riding a bike through the city when it comes to the bumps and everything else like that? Like, it just sucks. I mean, it sucks the older I get because uh -huh. that's more my body's like tired yeah. as shit. And you feel it. You feel it way more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you look like you was cruising though. When I seen that, I seen your build next to that bike. I said, Nah, you be you be cruising on that. Dog. Oh yeah, no, nah, for sure. Um, yeah. Cycling for me has always been a mental health thing. Mm -hmm. It's always been my like peace. The reason why I bought that bike, because I bought another bike, was because my therapist was like, what do you do? Like, mm -hmm. what can you do to give yourself some peace? And I was like, well, I used to always ride my bike to bring me happiness. Is it good for getting energy out? Yeah. Or just being active? It's good for getting energy, both. Okay. Okay. No, I can see that. I can see that. That That's that's wonderful that you're aware enough to be like, yeah, man, I need, I need me one of those. I mean, when I met you, it was like, hey, man, get a bike. Yeah, you know, I'm trying to lose some weight. Get a bike. You try to be happy. Get oh, a bike. You, yeah. you was, you was like, hey man, you should, you should get a bike. <laughs> I mean, it's good to have a license in a car and all that. Shit. My bike is definitely like Alternate. something that I use. Yeah, to like, like if like it can be two in the morning, I can't sleep. I'll go ride my bike. I'll, I'll, I'll tire myself out. Welcome back to another episode of Mental Health Monday. Here with my boy Josh. What up, boy? What's up, my dude? All right, let the folks know who you are and what it is that you do. Uh, what do I do? Like for career. Nah, just let's, let's the mic that you do. Oh, 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 hey, man. Oh, okay. Josh, I'm, I'm there. Josh. Uh, Fine as hell. I'll be out here. They love me. I love them back sometimes. I'm Josh on the day. Just a dude yeah. raising kids. Get yeah, father. Learn myself. Father of three. Um, and uh, Great. yeah, I just did the therapy thing. Yeah. Uh, I got onto that kind of later Great in life. Friend. Great friend. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm a blue collar man <laughs> I'm a blue collar tradesman yeah you'd be working hands um, on and I've seen you I've seen your hands with grease on them coming back from work like when the grease was just chilling in the skin I was like damn that's rough yeah working on cars is <laughs> um but yeah my name's Josh um I'm a father first and then I'm a tradesman and uh yeah I just I went. To, I started therapy because I needed to learn to love myself. So that's my journey with that. When did you realize that? Damn, I don't love myself. Was that a realization? Or was it just like always not an elephant in the room? It was just like you know, you woke up and it was just there. I would say that both. 
um, weirdly enough. And mm-hmm. when I say both is that one day, yeah, I just was like, bruh, like, like I was, like, I didn't want to look in the mirror. And I was like, damn, bro, you really need to like learn to love yourself. Yeah, so that's what that was for me. But it was always kind of there. Mm-hmm. Growing up, I, um, my mom was a very loving mom. Um, she always did all she could for me, but she was she was raised in a different time and period. Like my mom was born in 1944 in post World War II Germany. Mm. She was not a soft woman. <laughs> so growing up, it was like I think my mom apologized through doing things for me mm-hmm. instead of just apologizing and telling me she loved me. She would like go buy me a toy. She'd like cuss me out and like hit me in <laughs> and then be like. You want that <laughs> game? Yeah, you know I'm saying like it was just like no. I just need you to tell me that you fucking love me and you're sorry for smacking the <laughs> feel like I was a random stranger. You know, it reminds me. Uh, you know that commercial with the guy where he got the stickum thing and he like slaps it on the tank of water. Yeah, that's what that's what this story reminds me of. She was just like, hey man, just put a gift on it. Yeah, yeah. Kind of, just a little band aid on your hurt. Yeah. You ever had a talk with her about that? Yeah, for sure. How'd that go? It went fine. It, okay. it went good. It definitely gave a lot of relief to. I, it helped me understand my mom a lot more. Um, it helped me understand why she was the way she was and what she did. And, you know, and she was just like, you know, I'm sorry for, you know, certain things that I did. But, you know, like, it was just kind of how she was raised. She was raised in a time where, like, if you got in trouble at school, your teacher going to beat your ass. Yeah. And then while you walk at home, your neighbor going to beat your ass. Yeah. And then your parents going to beat your ass. You know what I'm saying? So Three it's layer like, cake. Yeah. So yeah. it's just like, you know, she wasn't raised with love. <clears throat> so she didn't know how to love mm-hmm. in that sense. She she knew how to provide and to take care of you and cook you meals and make sure that you got somewhere to sleep, shit like that. But she didn't really know how to genuinely love you. What was your you favorite know, dish that your way. mom made for you? As a kid? Yeah. Uh, I loved her peanut butter and jellies. Okay. Still a food that I love to this day. Okay. But mom, for some some about the way my mom made peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Yeah. I don't know if it was just because it was thick or whatever, like just bar none. Man, yeah, I used, used to love that. Sh- <laughs> <laughs> so we're finally doing this. You're like one of the. <clears throat> you're like one of the most important folks that I get to talk to on the platform. Yeah. Since like I I've known you like we were raised together. <laughs> <laughs> so when you hit me up and you say hey. Anytime you're ready, I s- so sh- <laughs> I was just like that. <laughs> mental health. <laughs> um, it helps with people out with their mental sh- <laughs> help with mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we all need a little bit of something. So we, all right. Where did it start for you in terms of wanting help with mental health, like therapy? Did you know, or was it just like you saw people talking about? mental health, talking about therapy, talking about it's made a difference and you was like, I can that make a difference for me too? Uh, to be honest with you, for me personally, it was mm-hmm. more so of just like one day I was just like, dog, I need to, I need to talk to somebody. Like I need to do something. Like, um, I did a lot of like self-medicating, I guess you could say, mm-hmm. but not through like the normal means, how normal, like most people do it. You know, most people self-medicate with some type of drug yeah, or like an excessive drinking habit or something like that. I mean, don't get me wrong, I smoked a lot of weed. Mm-hmm. Definitely drank a lot when we were working in the clubs, but did that ever, was that ever helpful for you or not? Fuck, I mean, fuck, like, it's like putting a Band-Aid over a ga- like a gaping wound. Ooh. It's just like, you say gaping, I just, yeah, really wide. So it's just like, yeah. It's just there. It's yeah. not. It's not really doing shit, but it looks nice to say, like you mm-hmm. know. Um, but yeah, like, like I don't know with dirty clothes on and yeah. brand new shoes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's just like you know what I'm saying. You just you just kind of. I don't know. For me personally, like I said, it was just one day. I was just like, dude, I need to do something. Mm-hmm. Like, um, I think one of the things that like really resonates with me is that um, I was. Like I was in a relationship with someone for a long time and like one day she came to me and she was just like, Joshua, like I'm tired of like you waking up and just being angry. Like I didn't do anything, nothing's happening. Like you're just pissed off. Mm-hmm. Like you need to do something about this shit or something out. And like 
that was years before I even went to get help. Like at that time, I was still kind of in denial about it. Like, like no, nah, I mean, like I'm just, you know, I just thought it was normal. Like I grew up in an angry ass household, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like anger was like, I didn't grow up in a household. I grew up in a household of love, I guess you could say, but also grew up in a household where like talking <laughs> is how you said I love you. Yeah. So, like very like aggressive and like, you know, get out of you was like a daily occurrence. You mm -hmm. know, it could be some stupid <laughs> but like being a kid and like my mom see like a <laughs> in the sink and like she's cussing you out and you're mm -hmm. just like, what the fuck? Boom, dude. Yeah. Um, so yeah, one day I was just like, man, I need to, I need to get help. I need to talk to somebody who actually can understand this. That's a third party that um, because it's it's one thing to be able to talk to your friends, but it's like you understand that they're going to have a little bit of what's the best way I can put this? They're they're going to be biased to us to an extent. And your friends are really good at being deflective, also. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like like if if they don't have the answer or they or like whatever you're talking about is out of their depth, it might just become either a man up or now you're just complaining about the wrong thing. No, I would say that, um, like back in the day, like mm -hmm. especially when we were working in clubs and we were around a lot of people, a lot of people call you their friend and mm -hmm. more so what I consider associates now, but like the people that I really know to be my friends. Yeah. Yeah. They're kind of like more straightforward. Like my friends are like, look, like they'll point out, right. Like you're, you're kind of causing this issue. You're kind of doing this on your own. Yeah. Like you need to reflect on this or do that. So I appreciate them for that. But just when I say bias, I just mean more so in the sense of like, there's there's like a level of like i'm not going to sh too hard but sometimes to be honest with you i feel like as adults like you need to be shit on them like people. you need somebody that's gonna yeah. sit there and sh for a second to yeah. have you actually sit and soak in that shit. one of the biggest things that like my cousin told me i was talking to him about some problems i was having he was like bro to be honest with you like you need to sit in that sh you need to sit in that shit and deal with that shit. like mm -hmm. you know us as adults or like most men from what i've learned when people I know is that like, we have a habit of trying to drown out our problems in something else, meaning like productivity. Like I have a buddy who goes through things and when he's going through things, he becomes uber productive. Mm. Like now he has like six projects going on. Mm. He's jumping into all this mm. to keep his mind off of it. But it's like, nah, dog, you need to like sit in that mm. about that mm. like drown it out with other shit you know does he ever complete any of his projects yeah for sure yeah but that's what i mean by like productivity like he tries to be as productive as he can to make himself feel better mm -hmm. about whatever else is going on but it's not going to make you feel better yeah. again it's it's one of those situations of putting a band-aid over a wound yeah what would you say the steps to denial were for you um steps to denial mm -hmm. i would say that it was just more so of like I wouldn't really say that there were steps. It was just denial. It mm -hmm. was, it, but more so, more so, honestly, more so, it wasn't even denial. It was just not giving a mm -hmm. For a really long time, I didn't love myself. I didn't care about myself. Like, it's like, yeah, I cared about myself enough to like not take myself out. But mm -hmm. honestly, I just feel like I don't have the balls for something like that. I think that should take the balls, but um, it's definitely been on my mind, especially like a lot when I was younger. Um, but Denial was, I was never really in denial. I was just more so in like kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's worse than being in denial, to be honest with you. Cause like you're knowingly knowing. You, like, you've accepted what it is. Yeah, you know, like, it, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it's just like, no, nah, you, you kind of need to do something with that. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of it was just being masked by like, like for me personally, a lot of my problems, especially when I was younger, um, was just masked by like, to be real, like talking to women or drinking. Or... So when you say younger, do you mean when we were raised together in the streets or? Yeah, kind of like, like yeah. when I was in like my, like, like late teens, early twenties type shit, you mm -hmm. know? Um, Cause to be honest with you, I had a pretty tumultuous childhood growing up. Like it wasn't terrible, mm -hmm. you know, like I never really went hungry. I never, yeah. you know, I got shit that I wanted. There like were that. fun parts. Yeah. yeah. Um, but like, it, like my structure in the house growing up was kind of all over the place like I mentioned earlier it was just constant chaos mm -hmm. um, so once I finally like felt like oh I'm a big dog like I'm gonna go out and be in the world and be an adult like mm -hmm. it was just like the world was like it, that, that shit screwed me up and spit me out on multiple occasions yeah um, but yeah it was just kind of do you think 
Well, you're not a product of chaos, but I'm probably definitely a product of chaos. Do you think you took that chaos with you in certain parts of your life? For a long time, yeah, for sure. What do you, what would be like an example of that, if you don't mind me asking? Drinking every single fucking day at work and just doing dumb shit. Mm -hmm. um, the biggest, the, I mean, granted, it saved my life, but the biggest example of that was when I had kids. Like, yeah. uh, most people who know me know that I have three boys because I'm very, I'm very outward with my kids. Like I'm a, I try to be the best dad I can be. That's like what keeps me going. Mm -hmm. That's my main driving force in life at this point. I do everything I can for my kids. Um, but how I had my kids and how that all came about was just a straight up example of that. Like my two older kids are a week apart. <laughs> That's never so to my, so my yeah. oldest son was born on the 15th of August mm -hmm. and his little brother well, not even his little brother, just his brother, mm -hmm. was born on the 21st of August. Literally a week apart. Yeah, literally. Yeah. Um, that, that that experience within itself was even nuts. Um, it was like, I remember, I remember, because like I was there for all their births and mm -hmm. all of that shit. So like, I remember going to my oldest son's, um, he was a C-section. Mm -hmm. So I remember going to the planned appointment um, where he was going to be born being there for the whole birth and like watching that c sucks is some crazy shit. um watching that shit go down mm -hmm. and then turn around a week later and my other son's mom's like i'm going into labor same hospital Duh. so i get there mm -hmm. and i walk into the delivery room where she already was because they called an ambulance because i was at work at velvet yeah um no i'm sorry that's not how that happened that was my youngest son mm -hmm. so my middle son I had got off work at Velvet, mm -hmm. went home. She was staying in my house at the time and I was living in like Trinidad. And like, I remember her water breaking. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, f this is real. So we, we ended up getting in, they get in the ambulance and they're like, yeah, we're going to PG. And that's when my other son was born. I was like, oh, <laughs> so I get yeah. there. Do you remember coming in? And, oh, shit. <laughs> Just put this up, obviously. No, nah, you're good. Did you ever remember coming in there and looking at the staff and say damn i know you damn i know you too no it, honestly mm -hmm. i didn't have to because they said it like the nurse ladies were just like weren't you just here like <laughs> i was just like and all you can do like yeah, it's funny now but like at the yeah. time it was super embarrassing it was like all you can do is just kind of chuckle at some shit like that and just be like yes ma'am like yeah it was um but yeah i'm here too but mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. uh, i mean shit, show up yeah. yeah i mean that's one thing i've always done though like i try to I try to be a really good dad, man. Um, Cause I'm already important like, for you to be a good dad. It like, is. Okay. I feel like there's enough shit motherfuckers out here these days mm -hmm. that don't take care of their kids. Like one thing that I've always tried to be big on is like accountability. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like, I I made those choices. I like, they, they didn't, they we're not fucking seahorses or, or animals that can have babies on their own. Like this girl didn't get pregnant by herself. She mm -hmm. didn't do that shit in her own time. Um, so, yeah, like being a dad is what makes me me in a sense. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's it's really weird sometimes because like people will come up to me, especially people that knew me before kids or like knew the old me and shit like that. And they'll be like, oh, man, you're an awesome dad, bro. Like, you know, I've had people like hit me up and be like, yo, dude, I wish I had, like you were my dad growing up as a kid. And like, it's just like it, it's, you just kind of just do it, man. Mm -hmm. It's just something you do when they say when people say things like that to you because you know i've always been proud of you as a friend and like watching you be a dad yeah is there a certain weight that comes with do you guys understand the amount of work that i put in to be a good dad though mm, i don't really think of it like that uh -huh. um but i mean of course you think of it like that in your in your own time yeah. i've never thought of it after somebody like compliment you yeah so the compliments are still pure for you yeah like hey now nah, i appreciate that yeah, yeah i mean um sometimes it also just depends on who the compliment's coming from mm -hmm. you know a lot of times it's from people who don't have kids and things like that so it's just like you know but also i think so like one of my biggest things and like another reason why i went into therapy and shit is that like i'm my biggest enemy um, tell me more i tell my therapist this shit all the time where i'm like my mind is like my worst enemy. Um, my mind plays against me all the time. So it's like, like there are times where I have to call my son's mom and be like, is there something I need to be doing better? Like, is there, am I lacking in some way? Like, I feel like I'm lacking. I feel like I'm not doing enough. I feel like I'm not 
And, you know, um, and a lot of times the answer to that when I get it is just like, no, nah, like, you know what I'm saying? What makes you think that? Mm -hmm. And it's literally just my brain just yeah. being an asshole. Um, but you also have people around you that are considerate enough to ask you what makes you think that instead of just assuming there's a lot of insecurities there. Yeah. Um, I mean, I can't lie. Um, I have a, like, I have a lot of supportive people around me. Mm -hmm. Um, I care take that away from any of them yeah um from like family to friends like anybody that i keep around me at this point is very supportive some in their own way but mm -hmm. always still supportive yeah i mean i try to be the same for like my homies um i'm really big on being there for people mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying i've seen you i've seen you be there for people at a price too yeah i think i think what's amazing about you though is you're you're really talented though when it's like nah fuck it, this is over <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean I'm just it's necessary though. Yeah, I, I'm shit, man. And that's not abandonment though. That's like, hey, there's unfortunately things do run their course, and you do have to be the person to say, look, I've done enough here. Yeah, I mean, but also I think that just comes from like how I was raised or how I grew up. Like I've, mm -hmm. I've like had my own mom tell me some shit like that before. Like, mm -hmm. like I can't do nothing else for you. Like, you yeah, know, you know, because I was just so rampant at one point. Like. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so I guess it just kind of, like I said, comes from like that home background of like, like, look, I'm gonna do what I can, but after a while, like, what else can I do? What tool <laughs> have you felt therapy gave you once you finally had someone you could talk to that was a third party? It gave me, um, to be honest with you, therapy <laughs> gave me tools in life to Did deal. you want me to get you some water? No, I'm fine. Okay. Therapy gave me tools in life to deal with like myself a lot instead of like outside things. It gave me tools to where like, if I'm getting pissed off, like mm -hmm. I can acknowledge it and I can sit there with myself for a second and be like, all right, bro, like let's evaluate this. Mm -hmm. I have a really, and also I have like a really bad anxiety problem. Okay. That's really, 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 and then most people who know me know this, like I I can get really, I can work myself up about mm -hmm. nothing. Mm -hmm. like, something will freak me the f out and it's like that's all i could focus on that's and i like hyper focus on that shit. it starts in your eyes yeah yeah you, you could just see it be like oh oh now we got real lament yeah no nah, so yeah so I, i've i've therapy has helped me be able to deal with that to mm -hmm. an extent i mean to an extent it's just kind of not deal like you can't do nothing about it but um it's helped me be able like you said to be able to reel myself in and be like all right bro like like one of the biggest things with me with that is like my therapist was just like, Joshua, like I have a problem with, I think of the worst in everything. Mm -hmm. I expect the worst. I expect the end of the world with every situation. I don't ever really go into anything expecting the best, which is also a problem. Um, so a lot of times my therapist was just like, Joshua, you need to, you need to fight this shit with logic. She was just like, what's something that can help you see that this isn't real and i was just like well usually when things i can make logic of things you know what i'm saying i can deal with them better she was like well you need to fight all that shit with logic like if um like funny like weird example like um if let's say you're dealing with somebody right mm -hmm. and you know let's say whatever like the person's not answering the phone they haven't picked up the phone all day or they're not texting you back whatever you know stupid shit like that that a lot of people deal with yeah um it's just like instead of just being like oh they don't want to talk to me anymore or they're ghosting me or whatever whatever mm -hmm. just you can kind of just be like okay well what are they what would they possibly be doing right now they're mm -hmm. probably at work or yeah they're doing something you know fight that shit with logic instead of just giving into those like Oh damn! They just gonna ghost me, like, or they're or they're doing something fucked up. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, and if it does come out to be what you negatively thought it was, then yeah, you deal with that when it happens. But don't immediately like you gotta fight that shit logic sometimes. Like, mm -hmm. okay, cool. Let's be a little bit more level headed. What's another version of you fighting yourself? Because the logic stuff, I could definitely see how that happens. I wouldn't say I get worked up like that. But I have had moments that like my mind has wondered. And then I think what I usually do is I ask myself like, hey, where is this coming from? Because like, I already know where it's going to finish. It's going to finish with me being insecure. It's going to finish with me either starting an argument or approaching someone about something that really has nothing to do with them and everything yeah. to do with me. And it's like, if you can figure that out. And usually when that happens, I'll talk to the person that I have an issue with about my thought process of what's going on instead of just having self-talks and making it a group project for myself 
and I'd rather fill them in so they understand where I might be coming from or if I switch up or I seem a little bit off, that's what's going on in my head. Uh, I guess for me, something else is just like, I don't know, really, to be honest with you, like the whole self-doubt is kind of like my biggest hurdle in life right now. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, it's just like anger. Like I have a lot of like anger shit. Like when I was a lot younger, like I was like I was definitely the person I was gonna smack the shit out of you, mm -hmm. and then be like, okay, so you want to talk about this now? Like, you know, yeah, I can't go about life like that. Yeah, I mean, I mean unless you're at Velvet Lounge. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, 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 I mean even that ran its course after a while too. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because we had dealt with so many motherfuckers in that place that it was just like after a while. To just be like, all right, bro, you kind of got it. Like, my bad. Like, I'm just... But also, the folks we dealt with had a lot going on, too. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Velvet was like a... It was just a... It was where everybody with problems went to feel normal. And what's funny is... So, everyone with problems did come to Velvet to feel normal. But I don't really think they brought their problems with them. Like No, because it, or... it was a place where they could just be. But when the problems showed up, it just felt like, you know how when back in the day when folks got married, they used to have the cans tied on the back of the cars mm -hmm. and it was making all their that noise as they arrived. Mm -hmm. That's how their problems would show up. Yeah. Like you remember a mutual friend of us had an ex that pulled up on him, like a young lady he was talking to. And she made like a whole situation in the back where we had to let her out the back. You know exactly what I'm yeah, talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was just like, he let you go. This is over. Yeah. What the hell are you doing like this? Yeah. Because her having an issue wasn't an issue. It was when it now became a brawl and abuse. And we were just like, nah, we're not. We're a lot of things. We're not that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> and always found that amazing how people stepped in that didn't even know him like that to say, look, you can't do that here. You gotta, I was you gotta skedaddle. But to be honest with you, that same kind of shit a lot in Velvet, man. Like I was like, I was, when I was telling you that we were talking about that story the other day where like the dude mm -hmm. was wild, like the dude's girlfriend was wilding out mm -hmm. and then he started wilding out to yeah. like be a, yeah, I don't know. I guess he was trying to be a big guy for his girlfriend. And then he got escorted to the front. Yeah. Yeah. To In better yeah. lack of words. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I was like, I was like random people in the bar mm -hmm. being like, you just, know, like. They, they all had that. Okay, and cool. he had to inherit that on the way out. Yeah, he inherited a lot of people yeah. on the way out. Yeah. And he got, the reason he got tossed at the end, like uh, Uncle Phil from Fresh Prince, was he still had the ability to continue to talk smack. Of course. I mean, most. I mean, because, like, you got to think about it, his pride was hurt at that point. Yeah. His pride was hurt, so he had to win. He was looking there. for something. Yeah, but he wasn't yeah. hit there. But, I mean, when you when you hit that wall at the end of your trip, you got to understand that wall is still a wall. Yeah. Yeah. For you, have you ever had a moment like that? Right. I hit a wall? Yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah, I've hit many walls. Um, I guess the best version of that would be, um, like, most people that really know me or have known me for a long time, they know my past. Yeah. And they know that I've... I was a bit of a, for lack of better terms, I was like a bit of a, a ladies man. Um, <laughs> let's just keep it, you know, we'll keep it there. I got you. Um, <laughs> um, so like, I just remember, I don't know if it was age, I don't know if I had just put myself through enough bullshit with it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I, at that point, I had just ruined enough relationships or You're you know, in it. friendships with people. Yeah. Um, that it, I like you said, like I just hit a wall and I was just like, this has got to stop. Mm -hmm. You know, like I don't want to be this person anymore. I don't want to do this. Like, you know, like, like going back a little bit to what we were talking about before, like there was a time in my life where I didn't even look in the mirror. Like I didn't, not because like, you know, like I literally just didn't want to see myself. I didn't, I didn't like who I was. I didn't like me at all. More people outside of me like me more than I like myself. And it showed because of the, the stupid ass decisions I made. Um, like, it was just bad. So, um, I hit, like I said, I hit a wall with that shit and I was just like, something's got to change, man. Like, this can't, I can't do this no more. Um, so I made a lot of changes with that shit. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. I still love the ladies, but I mean, of course. I'm, of I'm definitely course. like in a place where it's like, mm -hmm. 
I'm very straightforward with that shit nowadays. I mean, what you told me last week, that sense of being completely realistic with the people that are in and out of your life that you're dating, I thought that was like probably one of the biggest, scariest things you can do. Don't get me wrong, I do that, but that's not for the weak of heart to have those conversations about where you really are in life and what you're not willing to put up with or accept. Yeah. And sometimes what you're willing to put up with is it oh, something's a problem. Sometimes it's, look, I don't have the mental bandwidth to date you and care about you in the capacity you want me to because of everything I have going on. But if you want to have fun, I could have all the fun you want to have in the world. Yeah. But that's what honesty looks like. And if you want to accept that for what it is, I appreciate you. But if you don't, you'd be better off finding it somewhere else that's not me. Yeah, for sure. I mean, but um, even more than that, it's mm -hmm. also just like I've learned that um, well, it's just getting too old to like, I don't like, I'm not about to sit here and play with no 30 year old woman's emotions, 30. Yeah. Let's like, you know, cause most of the women I'm dealing with at my age at this point, like are going to be 30, 30 plus, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so it's just like, you know, nobody's about to play with some grown ass woman's emotions or time like that. No, there's people then, who do though. Yeah. I mean, you're not going to, yeah, that's the difference. Cause like, Somebody's gonna hear you talk, be like, nah, man, I got all the playtime in the world, bro. You know, and it's like, I'm not great. I still have my moments and shit where, you mm -hmm. know, I'm um, I'm not living up to my full potential, I guess you could say, where, yeah. you know, I still have moments of like, you know, things, but I try to be as forward with people as much as possible. I think one of my biggest things though, is like, as the older I get, is mm -hmm. that like, I, I don't really, <clears throat> I don't, I'm not just like, I'm gonna tell you what you need to know. Mm -hmm. And if I feel like that it doesn't affect you in any way or if it has anything to do with you, I'm probably not going to tell you, but that can also be turned around and looked at as f***ed up to some people because I'm like withholding, I guess. But it's also, I don't know, so that's something else I've been working on. Well, have you ran into points where you try to paint the picture for people and because they have the picture, they start doing unnecessary things? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say unnecessary. Uh -huh. I feel like that they take the picture in try to feel about it how they want to feel about it instead of how you it's like a artist painting a painting and telling you their reasoning behind the painting or how they felt with the painting or why they did the painting or what the painting represents and mm -hmm. then you holding that painting and giving it a new meaning mm -hmm. or you know yeah that i feeling of what it is i'd be frustrated with that like i just heard that example that you said and i felt myself saying nah i'm, I'm not like that yeah how do you deal with that I mean, I know about the just, cutting people off and letting I mean, them go, just, but like in the with, process, you just deal with it in a sense of just like mm -hmm. you. I've learned to that everybody deserves to be heard. Yeah. So you you hear them on their points. You hear them on how they feel. You sit with it for a minute, and you then you know give your response, or you know you either let it be or you try to change it. You know, um, I try to be very understanding and open to criticism. Cause I feel like people that don't want to take accountability or don't want to be hear about themselves are kind of the worst kind of people to me. Um, you should want someone to tell you like, nah, bro, what you did was fucked up, you know, or that's not okay. You shouldn't do that to people or things like that. And you got to hear that shit and be like, damn, okay. Why do they say that? Mm -hmm. Okay. This is why. Okay, cool. And then deal with it. Do you ever deal with different forms of guilt? and your growth period. Cause right now, when you talked about not loving yourself, I think for a lot of folks, myself included, when you have that realization, it's kind of a work in progress. So a lot of folks will be like, oh, I'm glad you love yourself now. And it's like, oh, no one said that. I'm, yeah, I might exactly. be working on it. You feel me? And like, that work may not be what you guys like, but it's necessary for me right now. Yeah, I, I, I deal with guilt <clears throat> um, with a lot of things, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, I'm one of those people where I'm very like, uh, I don't, I can't think of the exact word to put it, but, um, like if, if I feel like I did something really f***ed up to you, if I did something f***ed up to you and I care about you enough, I'm, I'm not going to be okay with it until I feel like I've made it right. Yeah. There's some things you just can't make right. Yeah. Um, so I'm learning to like how to deal with that. Cause how do you deal with that? You don't, you just, it, for me personally, I don't know. I haven't figured that out. I I still, like there are little situations and like 
So back to like how when people have always been telling me like, like, oh, you're a great dad, like blah, 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 you're doing a great job. Mm -hmm. um, when my kids were first born, like my two older ones, for like the first two years of their lives, I was not the man or parent that I am today. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't say that I was absent. I was never absent in their life, mm -hmm. but I definitely was like a, what I like to consider like a weekend warrior. Um, well, was that you were a weekend warrior because of your job or you a weekend warrior because you were coping with them with dad now? A lot of shit is honestly, I just wasn't grown enough to be a parent. Like mm -hmm. I didn't, like I accepted the fact that I was a father. I accepted the fact that I have, you know, people to take care of, I, but I wasn't, my actions didn't show that. It came out of my mouth, but what I, w I was still running the streets. I was still putting my own wants and needs before those of my kids. Um, and then one day it just hit me like a train and I was just like, nah, son, like we, we gotta, we gotta do better. Like you gotta do better. Yeah. Um, like I've never like been on child support or nothing like that, luckily. Um, but I think nowadays a lot of that has to do with the fact that I am such an involved parent. Mm -hmm. You know, if I would have kept on the road that I was on when they were little, like little babies and diapers and stuff still, like I'd probably mm -hmm. be on like some type of court order. <laughs> yeah, it was just bad, man. Um, so like, but the reason why I brought all that up <clears throat> was because like, I still carry some guilt from that shit. Like I feel bad, mm -hmm. you know? Um, like I was such an ass. Like I was so up my, like I had my head so far in my own ass that like, it was like, I remember when my son's mom was pregnant, she was like, she was like, can we go take maternity photos? Can we go blah, blah, blah? And I was just like, nah, I'm good on that. Yeah. And it's like, looking back now. Yeah, looking back now, it's just like, damn, that's fed up, dude. Yeah. You know, you, it ain't, it, like it was, it was, I was just selfish. It was all about me. Do you, you know? feel you took moments away from people? Oh, for sure. I took a lot of moments from a lot of people. <clears throat> um, which is why like nowadays when I move with people, I try to like not do that. Because mm -hmm. um, I definitely took a lot of moments. That's a good way to put it. So I, I, I took a lot of moments from a lot of people. I think uh, I have a similar story that relates to that. Like uh, my my last relationship before this one, because you you were there for a lot of yeah. stuff, right? And when we first got together, do you remember who I was when her and I first started talking? Like at Velvet and everything else, and I was running around crazy. Mm -hmm. I think there was like. It was like a year and a half to two years into the relationship, which was like we just got together. I remember for like a year and a half to almost two years, even after we broke up, feeling guilty that she had to do all that just for us to get together. Yeah, because I was just like this person had my back. And this is this is one I'm really big on. And I don't know if you have the standard for folks who date you. I only listen to people that have my best, like my health in mind. You feel what I'm saying? Like, hey, they want the best for me. And what does that look like? Because there's some people who like, they just want you for the peen. You feel what I'm saying? And then there's folks who's like, nah, you do have to get your license because if an emergency happens, you got to be able to get around and like, you do need insurance. It doesn't seem important now, but eventually you're gonna get sick because you're human. Humans get sick. Mm -hmm. And like, hey, it's not that you're overweight, but I do see how that translates to you having bad sleeping habits. Like as much as I enjoy having fun with you, I want you to see tomorrow with or without me. Yeah. And when I was faced with that in my last relationship, it actually made me be really careful for my current relationship now. Cause it's like, I realized, hey, it's, it's real easy to be the person that everyone says, hey, that's a great guy. Mm -hmm. And you're actually not that great to the people closest to you just off default of who you've always been. Mm -hmm. And that's also why I don't do well with taking compliments. So when people are like, oh, you do this, you do that. It's like, yeah, but it's like, you know, when you see the trade off that folks in my private life has have had to deal with for me to grow to be this person. It actually wasn't all that great for the people who should be most important to you that are in your space. Oh, yeah, for sure. I, I definitely, uh, I'm doing better now, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to, to, to put it bluntly, yeah, uh, I definitely <laughs> all over the people that I should have been there for. Yeah. Um, like I said, for a long time, man, because I hated myself, 
it showed in everything that I did and with everybody I dealt with. Mm -hmm. um, that was very selfish, very, very just on a whim all the time, just doing fucked up shit, not thinking about the consequences, not thinking about like, well, man, like 10 years from now, how's this going to feel? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, but and it's not to cut you off. You already were dealing with, I don't, I don't really love myself. Yeah. You feel me? Like, I barely appreciate me. I'm just lucky I'm here, right? Yeah. And you were also dealing with, what do I really owe you? I've already shown up and done what you and yourself are thinking is the most. I wouldn't say that. Uh -huh. Last part, I would say that I, I didn't know how to do more. Okay. I didn't understand it. Now, tell me like, about that, because I think that's really important. Like, I know... I, of course I'm not stupid, so it's like, I yeah. know what you should be doing. I know right from wrong. Like, yeah, I'm an adult. Um, but I literally just didn't, as stupid as it sounds, like I literally just didn't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. um, or I just didn't do it. And so that showed in a lot of that I did. Mm -hmm. um, like, and that goes back into like ruining relationships. Because it's like, you do shit. Like I've done some f***ed up shit. Like I've, I've, like, that's why it's kind of funny. Like with my sons, it's like they're gonna have a hard time of like getting away with anything. Mm -hmm. Like, because one thing they've done it all. One thing that my dad used to tell me when I was a kid, he used to be mm -hmm. like, "You can't bullshit, bullshit." Yeah. And so yeah, so it's just like I don't know, man. Um, I'm just learned that like. You got to deal with people in the way that they want to be dealt with. And if you're not willing to do that, then you shouldn't deal with them. <clears throat> Have you ever broken that rule? Uh, oh, yeah, of course. Of course I have. I'm broken all rules. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> um, but, <laughs> you know, but I'm I also can't... accepting <clears throat> it ends because I broke that rule. Okay. Do you think there's a... Is there a relief that comes with that or just acceptance and that's all it is? In what? And like, hey, I've accepted that these things happen because I broke these rules and that's just how the- For sure, because I feel like that's accountability. Yeah. It's being accountable for the fucked up shit you did and being able, yeah, it's going to suck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're going to sit there and be like, damn, I really wish this wasn't. But you have to accept that you chose to do what you did. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, did, this, did acceptance take- practice for you or did it more take growth to being able to just accept the things for what they are it takes time it's just time acceptance is always just time uh moving through situations is just time there's only one situation in my life mm -hmm. that no matter how much time goes by like it just doesn't change it's like what i want from it how i need it how i want it mm -hmm. what i do with it it just doesn't matter like not to be funny, but I can't stand on business against it. Mm -hmm. Like as much as I probably should or, you know, whatever, it's just, it just doesn't go anywhere. I don't think it's funny to say stand on business. I think it's a very real thing. I'm just saying it in that, in that, it's, no, no, I got you. I just, you know, I'm not going to laugh at that. There's a lot of people I know that are really good at not standing on business. I can name five of them. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. One of them was supposed to be at the baby shower last week. Uh, I'm just leaving it at that. I said, where? Oh, that's crazy. But, um, where has, what has your therapist, what role has your therapist played in your life? Cause I want to hear more about that. Um, therapy has played the role in my life to give me an hour out of each week mm -hmm. to so sit down. Once a week. Yeah, I go, I go to therapy once a week. Okay. Um, for an hour. And then I see a psychiatrist every other week. Okay. For an hour. Okay. What's the, difference between a role of a psychiatrist versus a role of a therapist as someone that's gotten therapy. So from what I've been asked, from what I understand is mm -hmm. your therapist is someone you go and talk to and they help you work through your issues mm -hmm. as a like <clears throat> third party, nothing to do with the situation kind of person. Yeah. Um, and your psychiatrist helps you if, so like I've been diagnosed with bipolar depression mm -hmm. and anxiety 
Um, so do you think they work well together or they kind of are two people that shouldn't be in the same room at the same time? I think that they work well together in a f***ed up way. Okay. And yeah, they work well, it, it's like two evil people becoming an evil duo. <laughs> to like ruin something, uh, shit, you know what I'm saying? Um, it's like yeah. mini me and f***ing Dr. Evil working together. Like, you remember when uh, Vegeta had the Maja Buu tag exactly. his head and it was yeah. just crazy? Yeah. So it's it's like that. So when my th like therapy is for me is like I said, somebody that I can go and talk to and confide in and be honest with and have them be honest with me without me feeling any kind of like they're saying this for a reason mm -hmm. or they have they know this person or know that person or know this situation. So they're kind of playing a fence here. Mm -hmm. you know, they don't know any of that. Shit. Yeah. They don't know any of the people I'm talking about personally. So it's just like. You know, they're just giving you an outside view and giving you tools and things to help you work through whatever the fuck is on your brain or to talk you off a ledge. Because mm -hmm. um, my therapist has talked me off of many alleges. Yeah. Um, and my psychiatrist is, it's like, uh, my psych psychiatrist has become like my, not, it sounds kind of fucked up, but like, he's like my weed man. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they, they give you drugs. Like, I'm not. I don't even do drugs. Like everybody that knows me knows that I've never been a drug person. Like mm -hmm. I grew up in a household where you were either the drug seller or the drug doer. Mm -hmm. um, so I really, I, I never wanted to be a drug doer. So a lot of time in my life, I went to being the drug seller. Yeah. And then I had kids and I realized that I got to change my life and get my shit together. But anyways, back to the things you've been the psychiatrist. Yeah. yeah. Back to being like with my psychiatrist, um, it's just like, they talk to you, like he, like my psychiatrist talks to me and like the first question that my psychiatrist asks me every session mm -hmm. is, do you wanna do bodily harm to you or to anybody else? Mm. And it's just crazy cause it's like, what he literally says is, do you have thoughts of suicide? And then I'll answer yes or no. Mm -hmm. And then he'll go, do you have homicidal thoughts? Mm -hmm. Like I've never had someone ask me some shit like that. Like, but there's a difference. Like killing somebody today or you're- Yeah. Saying, it's just like, Okay, good morning to you too. Yeah, let's go over this. Okay, <laughs> right in front of my scrambled eggs. Got yeah, you. And, yeah. And, you know, he asked me whatever questions else that he has going on, and then um, so I've been prescribed a drug called Lamotrigine mm -hmm. to help with my bipolar depression. It's like a mood stabilizer. Yeah, and then I forget the name of my anxiety medication, but he also has me on like an anxiety medication. Um, and he'll ask me like, so how's the medication doing? Do you see a difference? Are you know, do you feel different? Do you, and to be honest with you, I, I never do. I think a lot of like my differences with that just come from me mentally working through it. But do I take the medication in the hopes that it would work. Have you ever talked to folks that have seen the difference? I was like, I've had, people come up to see. I've had people come up to me and tell me, uh -huh. um, but like I said, like I'm my own worst enemy. So it's like, I hear that, but I don't really receive that. Mm -hmm. It's hard to measure someone that doesn't have a measure on themselves. Yeah. So, you know, like I have like, like even like with my son's mom, man, um, like that's my dude, man. Like, you know, we like my youngest two's mom, like, you know what I'm saying? I have a good relationship with both of my kids' moms. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, like I'm very grateful for that. Um, but my younger kid's mom, especially like, like she'll, she's literally just called me sometimes and been like, hey, I just want to let you know that you're phenomenal as a dad. Like you're doing a great job. Like I'm I'm grateful to have you as a co-parent, mm -hmm. you know, because um, I was even talking to her yesterday because um, my son, my youngest son goes to therapy. Mm -hmm. um, How old is he now? He's seven. Okay, I got you. Um, so he goes to therapy because he's just a hyper kid, man. And mm -hmm. I, we originally put him in therapy to help him be able to deal with his. Um, he's very. What's the best way to put it? He's very impulsive. Yeah. Very, very impulsive kid. Yeah. Um, very hyper kid. Very like. He just he's going to do something, all the time. Mm -hmm. Like something's going to get done. Yeah. Um, so. This is how you help him with that. But um, he has mentioned some things to his therapist while his mom was in the room with them. Mm -hmm. And so she left and called me immediately. And mind you, this is like, he goes to therapy like nine, 10 in the morning. Um, and this is like my day off work. So like, yeah, I still sleep. 
and I wake up and I got like three, four missed calls. So I'm like, I'm like, oh, shit, must be something going on. So I call her mm -hmm. and she just gets to telling me about like what he was saying in therapy. And she was just like, you know, I'm not going to like really go into it too much, but mm -hmm. it was the fact that she knew that she could call me, explain something to me that she felt some kind of way about. Mm -hmm. And then I could receive that information coming out of sleep. Yeah. Make, make a, make a change with it or do something about it mm -hmm. and then us be able to talk about that and then move on with the situation you know um and she was just like she was like i appreciate the fact that i can come to you with things and you don't get defensive or explode about it or be like your your initial response is okay well let's deal with this and we'll handle this and you know and she's just like it just makes this a lot easier but she's also the same way and but like i come to her and be like look man i don't I'm very raw with people, especially people I care about. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to like sugarcoat things with you, especially yeah. if I feel like it's something you need to change. That's also so the like, tools that you've been given. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, I can go to her and just be like, look, man, I think you need to not do this or this is a bad fucking idea. And mm -hmm. she's not taking it personal in the sense like I'm attacking her. She's taking it in the sense of like, okay, I see your point. That's a good point. Like, yeah. I'll, I'll do something about that. And then we allow each other the space to be to change yeah you know like we know there's things aren't immediate so i think it's nice that you guys are no longer together but you could still work on each other like that oh for sure that's my dude man like yeah like i you know she they either either one of my kids moms the same way like you know i'm there for it in the same way and i feel like they're there for me in that same way too like i can call either one of them if i'm having a fuck day and mm -hmm. just be like yo i just need to talk yeah like, you know, I don't want to call my therapist. I don't want to call nobody else. Like, I just need to talk. Yeah. Um, they're always willing to help. Like, my kids' moms, they're, they're not, like, best friends or friends with one another or anything mm -hmm. like that, but they do work together. And yeah, I'm very bad. grateful for that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm very grateful that I know that, like, they can call one another and be like, hey, I'm taking the boys to go do this, and I want to come pick up the other boy mm -hmm. and have them all together, and you know, and they'll do that, and they'll set up little things like that. Or like if I'm at work or something, she can call and call one another and be like, "Hey, I'm trying to drop, you know, like let's say it's Caleb's mom, like, hey, I'm trying to drop Kay off um, to Josh, but he's at work. Can I come drop him off with you guys? And when he gets off work, I'm sure he's going to come pick up Lucas and Logan. Mm -hmm. So you know, it's things like that that I'm very grateful for. It's cool names. You like said all together. Just that's the first time I heard them all said together. Like that's Lucas, Logan, names. or Caleb. Yeah, yeah. Their, their moms chose names for real. I ain't gonna lie. I, was, I had some, I had some bangers in my head. So they didn't like them. <laughs> they didn't like them. I was like, come on, I'm trying. You know, some crazy ass name. They were just like, uh, they were just like, Dawson, I'm not fucking naming. Like, like, are you crazy? And I was like, what? This fucking awesome, man. It's awesome fucking name. They just like, no, it's not. Um, but yeah, man, like. I don't know. I'm I'm very blessed in the, and I don't even use that term much, but I'm very blessed in the terms of like, like co-parenting with who I'm co-parenting with. Mm -hmm. It's not always the best situation. It's not always fun. Of um, course not. But nothing ever is. Well, it's the last time responsibility was really just fun. Yeah. yeah, for real though. Yeah. But being able to like be there. And it's also funny because it's like, it's hard. One of the wildest things to me, especially as like a single man, um, cause I hate it when people say single parent, like mm -hmm. you're just a single person. Mm -hmm. Like you're not, a lot of people aren't parenting alone. You're yes. just, well, for the ones that are, yeah, I mean, there, there are there. some, yeah, yeah. But for you, it's like, I hear the team dynamic of like, nah, folks yeah. are really trying. Yeah. I'm like, I'm, I'm a parent, but I'm like, I'm a single man, mm -hmm. you know, but as a single man, like even dating, um, let alone with one kid, I have three boys. And then when people enter my life and we're dating and then they see the dynamic I have with my kids' moms, mm -hmm. it makes a lot of people very uncomfortable. So they get nervous at the security that you guys have. In it's just not a normal. It's not a, usually when you see a situation like mine uh -huh. with like, you know, a dude and his, his um, kid's mom or the mom and the kid's dad. Someone's uh, all sudden. Yeah, it's just, there's like some emotional sh there still. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, to be honest with you, a lot of times I just break it down very bluntly to people. And I'm just like, look, bro, I've, I've literally put C4 on those bridges and mm -hmm. blown them up. Like, yes, yeah. like not even if like 
even if it was a situation of like where I'm like, oh, I want this. Mm-hmm. Like it's like a fuck no. Like yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I couldn't even do that if I wanted to. Yeah. Uh, How nah, you good, bro? So so it but it's just very weird. Um because it's like, yo, people are very off put by that shit. Like, like the faces I get when I tell women that I'm dating, like, oh yeah, like, like I, I, we can be like, we'd be out here right now. If like my son phone calls me or if like one of your moms call me, it's mm-hmm. just like, you know, I'm going to answer it. Cause it's like, I don't know what's going on. Yeah. And some people are just put off by that. It's just like, well, why do you always like, she call and you help her. And it's just like, what the fuck do you mean? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like when I, when I didn't have shit, when I, when I needed somewhere to be, or I needed somewhere to sleep or I'm fucking hungry or fuck, I need a ride from work or some shit. I know cool. that I can call my kids' moms. Yeah. One of them and be like, yo, can you f- with me on this? Mm-hmm. I'll pay you back or whatever, but can you, you know, most of yeah. them just like, yeah, I got you. Like, don't worry about it. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And I'm the same way with them. Like, they know that they can call me for whatever. And it's like, if I can do it, I'm going to do it. And if I can't do it, then I'm going to figure out a way to do it. So a very important conversation I have with my now significant other, who obviously we live in this spot, yeah. right? Um, and this was before we got together because we were talking about, I think she should, she shot her shot at me off Instagram in the pandemic. Oh, nice. Right. Yeah. And I didn't know. I thought she was just someone that was like interested in what we do with get home safe. You know, you know how I am. I'm very stonewall. Hey, nice to meet you. Keep it moving. And when she wanted to get together, I was like, Hey, I just need you to understand. I know thousands of people. And in these people's minds, they have different relationships with me. There's people who like have extremely intimate relationships with me. People who, when they see me, they know to run and jump on me and hug me. Are you comfortable with that? Because like, if you date me, I'm not going to change up those dynamics. I'll let them know I'm with someone. And if they're interested in me in that way, Hey, this isn't going to work because that's my job to defend the relationship. Yeah. But if you're not okay with that, I don't think you should put yourself in position to be around what I am as a person. Cause I'm very important in a lot of people's lives. Mm -hmm. And in my life, I think some of those people are important to me too. And I don't want to take that away from them just because I'm starting something new. Yeah. And a lot of people don't deal with that well at all. No. And that's fair for them. It's just, you know, we just know this isn't going to be. Yeah. But one thing I can also say is that like, Mm -hmm. even with like my kids' moms, like they're the same way. Of course, like dudes, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, they're going to fill up the people that they're dating feel uncomfortable too. But a lot of times with us, it's just like, look, bro, it's just what it is. Yeah. Like one of the things that I do with my younger son, well, I try to do with both of them, but my older son's mom, she's kind of one of those people that don't really ever want shit. And it's hard to like mm-hmm. get a gaze for her. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so I just kind of let it be like, if she needs something or if she wants something, or if I actually get an answer out of her, I'll mm-hmm. get it for her. But like with my younger kid's mom specifically, mm-hmm. um, like we we do these things where it's like like Christmas and birthdays and stuff like that. Um, we have a limit for one another. Okay. Where it's like, okay, you I'll get you something up to this amount of money. Mm-hmm. Um and like a lot of people like feel like even that's weird. Like like why do you buy gifts for your kid's mom? And it's just like, what do you mean? Like I, I think no, no, go ahead, finish. Uh, no, I was just saying it just doesn't make sense to me. Um I get, I think with a lot of people, it's just jealousy or like, you know, I wouldn't even say jealousy, just uncomfortability because it's not the norm. You're so used to these days seeing like, oh, my baby mother. People haven't had father. Yeah. That's what it is. People haven't had that. Right. So when you see someone have something that's out of the ordinary, your first thought is how does that affect me? Like you maintaining that relationship with those two people, how am I going to be able to find space in your life if you're focused on them. That's what people think. And you're not yeah. focused on yeah, them. No. You're like, nah, for you. And it's not to demean the and relationship it, you have with them. They're great friends in my life. Yeah. And the yeah. funny shit is, is that my kids' mom mm-hmm. always like, like, like just be like telling me like, Dazzle, you need to go, you should date someone. You should mm-hmm. go be with someone. Like, but you can date people. I mean, here and there. Yeah. But, but you do it. Yeah. But, but eventually you get to it. I've, I've heard the stories. You get to it. Yeah. You feel me? It's just like, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. Like, it's just funny because mm-hmm. of how it all goes down most of the time. So do you think because of people's assumptions of what you do, do you think people assume 
the relationships aren't working out because of what you have going on versus, hey, they just don't work out? No, a lot of, no. Okay. Because, I mean, if we even get to a point mm -hmm. where I'm dealing with somebody and it's a thing where it's either working out or it isn't, mm -hmm. like, you, you've had to accept what my relationship is with my kid's mom and our dynamic. Yeah. Um, Cause that that's not gonna stop. Yeah, no. Yeah. So, so yeah. So there's that. So like, if we even get there, it has nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. you know, if it doesn't work out, yeah, because we just didn't work out. Yeah. Well, that's good. That's good that. I mean, you've always been a blunt person, but like, it's your handling of the situations that has changed to me, quite honestly. Oh, for sure. You were, I, I think you were me. always honest with people, though. As I as much as I could be. I'm yeah. not gonna lie. I've lied to a lot of people. I've definitely held the truth from a lot of people. Uh huh. Um, but you don't lie in your stories though when you tell them though, huh? Gotta give you credit for that. When you tell your stories, you don't lie in your stories. Oh yeah, no. There's a lot of folks who when they tell their stories, they lie in their stories, and it's like, fam, you did. I got a homie, man. Yeah, I got a homie. I love the chef. I love this, I love this dude, the gentleman. I've been friends with this dude for easily 15 years or more. Yeah, I'm a good friend of mine. But this, he's one of them people, bro. Where like you talking to him, where he'd be like, "Hey, bro, I gotta tell you about this." Like you gotta listen, yeah, with like a like a fine toothpick and like yeah. pick out like okay, <laughs> that happened. This did not happen. All right, cool. What are you trying Part to the story, yeah, like yeah, it's one of them people where he'd be like, yeah, man, I was running from the cops and what, and they had like a helicopter, like fam, they almost hit me with the cop car. Were he'd you like, playing GTA? Like, all he did, all he probably did was like uh -huh. run down the street or something. Like yeah, so, <laughs> like. <he's> like <laughs> Other than that, other superhero man. shit, fuck yeah. happened, bro. Nah, I got you. I got you. I got you. Um, all right. So we talked about the therapist. We talked about the psychiatrist. Where has, where have you seen the most impact in your process since going to therapy? Right, because we touched on loving yourself better, and that's that's one thing that, I want to circle. That's back. where too. That's where most progress has happened. What what has that looked like for you as um, a man? Where has, what has that looked like for you? As a man, uh, it has been a place of where it now puts me in a position where I can love those around me. Mm -hmm. um, like I, I had told an ex of mine for a long time. Yeah. Like we had a, we had a conversation about like some of the things I did in our relationship and shit like that. And I was telling her and I was just like, dude, I didn't, I didn't love myself. So it was impossible for me to think that I could ever love you mm -hmm. or anybody else. So it's given me the ability to love others and to be there for others and to genuinely care about others because mm -hmm. I do all of that for myself. Yeah. Like, I, I, I feel like that it sounds kind of selfish, but it's just not like a lot of times you have to love yourself first. Mm -hmm. Not in a f***ed up way, but you genuinely just have to be like, I love me mm -hmm. to be able to be like, I love you. Did that take practice? Did that take being heard? Did that like what changes? It took, it, it, to it took a lot of. Like I brought up earlier, it took a lot of sitting in that shit and mm -hmm. and really working it out. Yeah, that's what it took. Um, it took a lot of self self evaluation, self like changes. Like, cause it's one thing to want change; it's one thing to actively chase change. Mm -hmm. um, and change is forever, and that takes a lot of energy. Yeah, but yeah. it's also something that doesn't end. I feel like a lot of people feel like change is something that just happens one day and then it's over, and then you just live this new life. You know, it's like you have to constantly actively be different. You know how in AA meetings they talk about like falling off the wagon? Mm -hmm. It's really like that. Yeah. Like in a lot of different parts of your life. Yeah, for sure. So like a lot of folks, a lot of folks like me and love me and I've, I appreciate that. I've earned that. But I know like coming from Jersey and the way I was raised, I was raised in a great home. My parents were there. I had both my mom and my dad. My dad wasn't in the house a lot because he was raising my sister in Montclair, but I had him at nighttime. So it was like he'd get off work at Maytag, go to my sister's house, raise her, come through to the crib, and I would get him like two hours before sleeping. We ain't talk much, but I know I had access to him, yeah. right? But like I was a pretty sneaky kid, and I did like a, I did like a lot of stuff. Like looking back at it, like. One time I had one of my exes climb in through my window in the middle of the night. This is after we broke up. This was like not a good relationship. And she was stranded in Newark and she needed some money to get back home over to uh, Elizabeth. I think that was it. Yeah, Elizabeth. And if you know about New Jersey, you know, Newark 
not the greatest place. Yeah, yeah. Elizabeth. <laughs> yeah. Elizabeth. It's also not the greatest yeah. place either. Nah, so I mean, like you wanted to be yeah. out there, you show that <laughs> such as a female. <laughs> but like I say that to say that like I had a lot of deviant behavior growing up. Oh yeah. I was raised in like a good home. Oh yeah. And because I was hyper aware of that, even when I got to college and after college, I was like, hey man. It's good that you're liked, but you really need to be careful about falling in love with the amount of people that likes you and not working on the things that aren't really good for you. Yeah. While you can. Cause I was like, you know, that love thing has a limit. Like that love is earned. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. It, it's a practice. You're doing something in people's lives that they may not get access in other parts of their lives. Don't fall in love with all the things that people love about you and stop working on the things that you still need to work on that's not in the light often. Yeah. So that's that's how I've often been, like when it comes to being honest with people, when it comes to the handling of situations that you've seen me handle a lot of situations. Yeah. But like, and that's why I wasn't so messy of a person because what you guys saw as my friends was me really working on that yeah. and really telling myself, hey, don't, don't do the dumb thing that's easy and exciting just cause. Yeah. And we always had access to it. And it's not just uh, that establishment. It's just in general, like folks who invited us out to restaurants to like cover bills, folks that wanted to be around us for fun, people yeah. that wanted to take us out to movies and treat us nice. And then it's like, you know, after a while I had to start asking like, hey, I don't even know your last name. I don't know what your family is like. What was yeah. life like for you before we started hanging out together? Those are the things I want to know. Because whether it's bad or not, I still accept you as a friend, but you really got to make space for that. For me, man, to be honest with you, I've had the same friends mm -hmm. um, pretty much my entire life. Um, I'm not like same characters or same group same of people, people. like literally yeah. same people. Um, I know like there's a lot of people who know me, especially because of Velvet. Um, a lot of people in this city, like, I go through the city a lot and <laughs> They everywhere. Like, I remember I was on a date one time. Yeah. And, like, I'm walking down the street, and That's it's like person after person after yeah. person, and go into the restaurant. Yeah. People that work in the restaurant go to a bar later. People that mm -hmm. work at the bar, like, yeah. And, like, the, the person I was on the date with was just like, just like, God damn, like, do you know everyone in this fing city? Yeah. And I'm like, I mean, to an extent, but I'm also like, going back to what I was originally talking about, like, I've had the same fucking homies for forever. And even that circle has gotten smaller, mm -hmm. you know, because I've hit a point in life where it's just like, I don't, that's that like verse where they were just like, no new friends kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Like that's kind of where I am in life with that. Shit. Like, yeah. I don't need, like I'm a grown ass man. I don't need a bunch of friends, dude. I got grown man problem. Um, yeah. But a lot of people know me and a lot of people are like, oh yeah, that's my boy and blah, blah. And it's like, I'm not mad at that. I'm not, mm -hmm. but it's also like, I, couldn't say the same like I've run into people where like they know me intent like deeply and I guess I guess they think they know me deeply at least and like they're just like oh man so f great to see you and I'm sitting here having this conversation I'm like dude I don't even know your f name yeah I don't know who you are but like but for a second like I'd be wanting to be like are you sure that it's me nah, you're talking know. to people know they know they know that yeah they I know hey who the fuck is this you don't know their name, but you recognize them. Or you're, I don't even recognize or you're willing to have the conversation. Yeah, yeah. That's that's what I it is. A lot, a lot of that me for me is weird, though, because, like, I feel bad. Like, I'd be wanting to be like, who the f*** are you? But, like, I don't want to be a dick because they're all excited to see you and to be like, what up, man, and catch up. And I'm just like, man. this is life of me. But, honestly, a lot of years mm -hmm. was a blur for me because I just was fucked up every day. Also, what we've done work-wise yeah we're a part of a lot of people's core memories growing up mm -hmm. like a lot of people's 20s and 30s remember there's for me there's grown men who are about to be 50 that still call me for advice yeah and like me being younger than them doesn't mean i'm not qualified for advice but it's because i've handled things better and they just want to hear from someone that actually cares about their situation when they decide to reach out it's funny a lot of people call me for like dad advice yeah like it's like everybody that I know for the most part that's having babies, um, like men at least. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna like, call you. They'll, they'll that's all kinds of like, hey man. They'll call me and be like, Josh, man, I'm having a kid, and I'll be like, oh, congrats. 
Welcome to the sh show. Nah, literally, that's literally, from what I keep hearing, like, you're telling me about his little one right now, man. Welcome to the Yo. show, man. Uh, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, they always call me, and they're just like, man, like, I'm fucking scared, or I don't know. And I'm like, bro, you're going to be fucking scared. It's yeah. going to be a ride, like, yeah. yeah. But you got to ride the fucking ride. Yeah. Like, you know. Um, yeah. So I help people out as much as I can when it comes to, like, being a dad or, like, you know, like one of my good buddies is about to have a little boy mm -hmm. and like, you know. You at the baby shower. Um, yeah, yeah. And so phenomenal like, baby shower. Yeah. Pool tip. Man. Yeah. Yeah. The fucking refrigerator full of beers. I'm yeah. Like, Hell yeah. Wow. Like baby shower. Oh, chips like everywhere. You. I was like, yeah, and nah, I like that. Just sandwiches. <laughs> <and beers? laughs> Fuck yeah. Hey, that plate of fruit, I was allergic to some of the cherries, but it was worth it. Like, yeah, it was worth it, it, it bro. Get my <laughs> it was like, worth it, it bro. Uh oh. <laughs> But like he he didn't like he called me man and like I remember him calling me and being like yeah my girlfriend's pregnant and I was just like oh <laughs> like mm -hmm. well, welcome I was, I'm gonna think one of the first things I told him I was just like well dude like have all the fucking fun you can for the next nine months yeah not in a bad way like don't yeah. go fucking destroying your life yeah having fun but like get it out of your system dude that's the best advice I give to any new father that's mm -hmm. coming along if you and the chick aren't together. Get all of that dumb shit out of your system. And if y'all are together, mm -hmm. get all that dumb shit out of your system in a healthy, respectful way. Yeah. Because once that kid comes, dude, you're, you need to be on top of all of that shit. Yeah. Doctor's appointments. Don't let her just take the baby to the doctors. Don't let her just deal with all of that shit. Don't let her deal with mm -hmm. signing all the papers, doing all the documents. Like, don't do that. Like, that's my mom. Be, because a lot of women will do that because they're expecting to have to do that. Yeah. But it's like, you need to step up and be like, no, I can handle this part. I'll deal with this part. You yeah. need to know. You need to know your doctor's phone number, your baby's doctor number as well. Yeah. You need to know, they need to know your face, your name. You need to know their face, their name. Mm -hmm. You need to be able to recite what the f is going on with your kid's health or school or whatever. Yeah. You got to know what they're allergic to. Yeah. Yeah. Like you don't need to be in a point where you're asking someone else about information about your own child. Yeah. Like one of the things that was kind of like fucked up to me mm -hmm. that like I, as a dad, like was very offended by was I remember it was at my son's school. Uh, my One of my younger sons, my two youngest go to the same school. And then we were, I was at their school and the teacher was like, hey, you know, they, they call me dad. Like, I don't know, all school staff. I don't know if they, like, I mean, all parents. Like, they're like, hey, mom or dad, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, but she was just like, hey, dad, like, <clears throat> can you give these papers to mom so that she can sign them? And I looked at her, and I was like, what? I was like, can I not sign the paperwork? Mm -hmm. And she was just like, oh, I mean, yeah, you can for sure. And I was just like, yeah. And, like, I had to have a talk with my kid's mom, um, and it wasn't even that I was absent from their school or the school never seen me, but it was a few instances where schools are just so used to just dealing with moms mm -hmm. that they don't even think about like, oh, let me, act. the dad can do it. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Right. And like, I literally had to go with my son's mom mm -hmm. and us both be at the school. And this is why I f with her dog, because she was even like, she was like, you guys can call his father. His father's his father. Like his father, it's not, he's not some like, like his father does what he's supposed to do. Like mm -hmm. it's not just me. Don't just call me. Like he has a father. Mm -hmm. Call his father. Yeah. You know? And it was like to see the teacher's face and the administration face just be like, Oh, we kinda of fed up. Like, we apologize. We yeah. mean, you know what I'm saying? They just got out of auto mode. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it was just like and it was funny because one of my one of his teachers called me, because like I said, my younger son, he's full of energy, man. He's just a he's just a He's like a Tasmanian devil. He just mm -hmm. goes, goes, goes. Um, his teacher was like, Mr. Young, I appreciate you because he's like, I don't, he's like, I just mention you and your son could be hanging from the ceiling. And I say, uh, I mention your name to him and he immediately like, will sit down and like, <laughs> these he's work. Hey, all right, this is over. I'm, like, I'm going to be right here if you guys need me. And like, these yeah. work and calm down. He's just like, I appreciate your presence in his life and your presence and you know, he's like, I know that I can call you at any time and you'll show up to the school in 10 minutes. Like, mm -hmm. like I will leave work, bro. Like, yeah. I don't give a fuck. Like, I'm not asking you, can I go? I'm not. None of that shit. I will give you the respect and walk up to you and be like, hey, I'm leaving because my son's having a thing at school. Yeah. And I will be out. Like, I do not care. Yeah. You know? And their school knows that. So it's funny. So they'll call me like, Mr. Young, oh, blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying? Um, But that's a big thing that I can suggest to like 
like that I always suggest to homies who are having kids like like dude like you need to be a part of it like even if you don't want to be with the shorty like I know some dudes just you know whatever you might have fucked up and got some girls you really fuck with pregnant like yeah you decked it bro like you mm -hmm. definitely shouldn't have been hitting that Jane all willy nilly but now you're here yeah so you need to be an integral part of this mm -hmm. and like do not and it's also just fucked up to leave all that on so because women go through shit that we don't go through yeah as men you know what i'm saying um like what's the like what is it called postpartum depression yeah, like postpartum depression uh yeah. like that's nuts bro that nah, is that shit is it nuts is. bro and it's real and it's like something i feel like a lot of men don't understand because we don't and, go through it. and they can stay with them for their lifetime yeah it's like sometimes like it doesn't go here. away yeah and then it's like yeah. other times it's like really really f bad um and it's like i wish that i would have understood these things when i was first having the kid because mm -hmm. i didn't and you know my kids moms kind of had to soldier that sh out for a while um so i tell them things like that like dude you need to be aware of this you know you need to be like like, fuck, maybe if you aren't with Shorty, like, fuck, sleep at her house on the couch. Mm -hmm. The baby starts crying, go get the baby. Go yeah. do something. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, y'all ain't got to be together. Mm -hmm. But, but that's what makes you feel. Yeah. This is like, bro, she just went through fucking birth. I've seen birth every way you can see it. Mm -hmm. Like, a bad, bad seen, birth. Yeah, I've, yeah. So I've seen a C-section. I've I watched them cut her open mm -hmm. and reach up to their fucking elbow into her abdomen and pull him out in a fucking little... The, the sack, the embryonic sack, and like mm -hmm. cut the sack open, flew it, and baby, and screaming, and crazy shit. And, uh, and I just remember bothered the dude has his fucking arm up to his elbow, like I said. Mm -hmm. And I'm just looking at her because, you know, you stand like by their head and shit, but I'm so tall. That I, and there's like a blue sheet up, it's tall, tall as fuck. So I can see right over the blue sheet. Everything. And then all the doctor's masks that the face masks that they have on like were like reflective. So it was like a fucking mirror. And I was, it was just crazy. And as I'm watching this shit, she's just laying there just chilling and i'm like you don't feel that shit and like i'm freaking out i'm like freaking the fuck out she's just laying there looking at me she's just she's talking to me she's just like i just feel a bunch of pressure in my like my abdomen and i was just like yeah because he's fucking elbow deep in your shit right. see now she got the visual because you man um <laughs> and then natural birth was like yeah my, my my middle son um I gotta give it to like my kids' moms though. Like they were G's about that shit. Mm -hmm. Like even with the C section, like she was a G about it. Like, you know, getting stapled up and like going through it. Like I said, like she's sitting there with staples and shit, taking care of a newborn shit, you know, like making her have to go through that alone for as long as she did was fucked up to me. Like I deal with that. Like I don't like that. Mm -hmm. Um and then watching my other son's mom give like birth. Like she gave birth to my son in like thirty minutes. Like, I thought that I was going to be there for, like, six hours. She gave birth to that dude in 30 fucking minutes, like, straight G shit. And it was just, like, the other crazy part surprised. was they wouldn't give her fucking, like, epidurals and shit. She didn't want it. No, she was at give it to her. No, she was like, she was like, can you fucking, like, she was kirking on, like, can you fucking give me yeah. the fucking pain medication or yeah. something? Like, this shit sucks. And they, they didn't and explain it. They just, just kept nah. fucking, like, pushing it off. Like, the nurse lady would be like, all right, just give us a moment. We just got to get this and this ready, that, that ready, blah, blah, blah. And then she like spazzed out and the lady was like, well, the baby's already coming, so we might as well just do it. Dude, like, and that's what black women- You don't never, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, they treat black women terribly in hospitals, bro. Terribly, terribly, like it is fucked up. Like, um, they treat black people in general fucked up in a hospital with black women. Well, black sure women do yeah. them the dirtiest. Yeah. Um, but like this, the scream of a mother giving birth is like a scream that like, I don't think you can come. The only other time I've heard a scream like that was when I was a kid, I was like 15. And my dad was like dying from like uh, stage four cancer. And my mom went into his room because like my mom and dad didn't sleep in the same room. Um, she went into his room to like wake him up for a doctor's appointment. My dad was like, you're being dead. And like my mom like screamed because she seen my dad dead and shit. That's the only thing I can compare that birth scream to. Like it was just very raw and guttural and like I don't want to say animalistic, but very what's the word? It's a better word that I've used. Primal. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's a very primal scream. Um, like that whole process. Yeah. I remember when he first came out of the womb. 
he, his little his little head looked like a fucking cone head because <laughs> like you know like literally squeezes out of the birth canal so it's like <laughs> you think of the cone head movie bro he looked his head looked <laughs> like the cone head you know the heads are soft coming out yeah i know yeah yeah, and, yeah. but like i'm i'm this is like i'm i was having like bro i was I was overloaded with a lot of shit. So yeah. I was like, I remember looking at the nurse and being like, yo, his fucking head's not going to stay like that, right? And, and she was just like, she started laughing like, you are, and she was just like, he's like, no, Mr. Young, like the, the like you mold the babies. I'm like, mold it? And she's like, yeah, you can just, you know, rub his head and then it'll go down. And I was just like, all right, cool. So babies are a pottery yeah, class? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and like the little cap that they wear helps, you know, mm -hmm. keep that shit at a certain point. But I was just like, God damn, son. Like, yeah, um, that shit was nuts, though. Like the whole birth thing was just like the late, like the dog. I remember the nurse at one point, she was like, Mr. Young, can you sit down? I was like, fuck no, lady, I can't sit down. Like, yeah. this is nuts. Yeah. Like. Like why to talk about baby come out of a situation? Yeah, make you look at a fucking vagina differently for the rest of your life. Like mm -hmm. it is crazy. So, yeah, like, and then it goes back. It just goes back. Just like nothing happened. I, it takes a little while. It, yeah, like some of them get stitches and shit. I think mm -hmm. my mom, my son's mom, had like, but I don't know if it was stitches or staples or something. But yeah, they had to like fix that shit back up. Um, and then like my youngest son, she gave birth to that dude by herself in the back of the ambulance like her water broke on the way out of the house and mm -hmm. then like the by the time the ambulance got there she pushed that nigga out and like caught him in the back of the ambulance and then like the uh oh that's crazy like the the, the fucking paramedic dude the emt dude like came around the back out again i was at work i was at velvet when i mm -hmm. got this phone call um emt dude like ran around and she was like guys he's here and the dude looked at her and was like Oh fuck! We need to go, go. Like we need to get the fuck out of here. So that's the only reason why he, my youngest son, was born at Greater Southeast, mm -hmm. um, which was a wild ass experience within its own. Um, yeah, I remember getting that. We're gonna phone. have to. We're gonna have to come back to do just breakdowns on these days. Oh yeah, no. Nah, yeah, they were. <laughs> yeah, no. Nah, so I remember getting that phone. I'm at Velvet. I got that phone call. I'm mm -hmm. at work and. It's like uh, it was it was her homegirl because her homegirl's at the house with her. Mm -hmm. And she's like, Josh, we had the baby. I'm like, the fuck you mean she had the baby? Yeah. And she's like, yeah, we had Greater Southeast right now. And I was like, fuck. So I, I went there. And it was, I remember seeing my son for the first, my youngest son for the first time. I nigga had like a me mug for like <laughs> the first six months of his life. I have pictures of that. Shit. I have pictures of him in the little like in the little bundle and all that shit in the hospital just mug it. And I'm like I'm like this little motherfucker's. Hey, you have to send me some of these pictures. Oh um, yeah, I put them in an interview. Just a me mug, just staring. Yeah, he was an angry yeah. little dude. It was it was fucking hilarious. <laughs> he still be angry, yo. Uh, that little dude's a world. I knew looking at him in that little baby thing that day, I was just like, this kid's gonna be a handful. Of money. Yeah, this little dude's a jerk. Um, but it was funny, man. Like Greater Southeast was an experience on its own. Yeah, that was a wild ass hospital. They like gave me and their mom like a fucking chef's prepared dinner after she gave birth. <laughs> Like it was just so gourmet, dead ass. Like came, like came in with like the chef and like the the platters and shit and like the little silver things over the food, like like some shit. I'm just like, what the fuck is going? And I I remember looking at her and laughing, and she was laughing with me. She was just like, I was like, damn, they be in this bitch trying to bring families together, dog. Like, yeah. Because at that point we weren't together, so it yeah. Was like what month was we this? Just, shit, man, he was born December fifth. Oh, damn. That's the right season. Yeah. The yeah, food wise, that quality food is in there. But the wild part was, uh huh, was like when they handed you the menu for the dinner or whatever. It's like a little they special. Move your chair up a little bit. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, forward. Uh, it's yeah. like a little yeah. special menu they give you and shit, man. Mm -hmm. And I'm reading it. And I'm like, man, this fucking hospital food. This shit's gonna be terrible. Like mm -hmm. I don't like they had like steak or salmon yeah. or whatever the fuck. So I ended up just getting like a fucking chicken Caesar salad because mm -hmm. I was like, you can't really fuck that up, you know. Yeah. But I was blown because when she ordered like the salmon or whatever, when that shit got there, that shit was all seasoned and nice. And I was like, like that shouldn't have been me. Oh, well, it should have been me. Yeah, I was like, shit got that steak. You know? I like, don't waste it. This all be too on a fucking Caesar salad. I mean, you paid for it. No, that shit was. It was covered by insurance? Oh, it's complimentary. So, yeah. like, with birth, you just get the dinner and everything? I guess so. Sustenance, man. Now you eat that. It was not like I didn't pay a bill for that. I, That's I, know, some, I didn't even talk to her about that. I was like, did they charge us for that shit? Because, you know, childbirth is already fucking. Yeah, expensive. yeah. 
Yeah. Um, but yeah, man. So like going back to like the original point, um, mm -hmm. of just like helping homies, like they, I've always been the guy that like people call and be like, yo, Josh, uh, what do I do, man? Mm -hmm. Um, like, but I've also even had to like tell certain homies like, bro, like you kind of dropping the ball with this shit. Like, yeah. cause that shit kind of pisses me off. Um, when you see homies drop the ball. When I see homies not being fathers. Yeah. Um, that shit pissing me the fuck off. Or like anybody I know for real. It's cause it's just like, bro, I know if I can do it, bro. Mm -hmm. I know that if I can be a productive parent, yeah. you can be a fucking productive parent. Yeah. I have three fucking kids. Most of you only have like one. Mm -hmm. It's like, bro, I have three of these motherfuckers. Yuck. And it's it's not and what I've also one of the biggest pieces of advice that I give a lot of new dads is that like it's not the financial part of being a parent that sucks. Mm -hmm. It's the time part yeah like your life is no longer yours nah not at all you all borrow time all of that shit that you used to do or want to do does not matter at all nothing that you want matters anymore it's what they need what's it like dealing with that dealing with like my own personal shit not matter yeah like what that change i uh, think about that sometimes like when you go from being selfish or having the time to focus on yourself to yeah. I wish you would focus on yourself. Um, to be honest, I needed that. You needed that? I needed that. I so needed you needed that. that focus to be taken away from yourself? Yeah. Okay. Um, I tell people all the time, like being a dad saved my life because I was definitely on a path to death or prison before I had kids. Um, so the fact that I knew that now I have to take all of my efforts and time and put it into something productive. Mm -hmm. um, I need it. Like a lot of people, I don't know, a lot of people probably don't know, but um, when I when I fucking had kids, I didn't have a high school diploma. Mm -hmm. I was working like three fucking jobs. Yeah. I literally got my diploma I went to school, I went back to school after my, like my older two were already like one, two years old when mm -hmm. I went back to school. And you know what it's like being a grown ass fucking man in, like I went to a program through Baloo where you can still get your high school diploma. Mm -hmm. You write up from the, the ages of like 18 to 23. Yeah. Um, you can still go, if you're between 18 and 23, you can go to this program. It's, but it's like regular fucking school. Like literally you go to school from what, nine in the morning until three, four in the afternoon. You got a classes, you got a fucking locker. Like you got a lunch period. Like you literally fuck a high school. You also realize oh, it was way easier to get it done when you were younger compared to now. Yeah, for sure. Because it was like, I remember being in that shit dude and spazzing out on this kid who was probably like 18 or something. At the time I'm like 22 or some shit like that. Mm -hmm. Um, I remember spazzing out on him, bro, because he was just being a dick in the classroom and like not letting the, the teacher kept having to stop. And I'm already blown, bro. Like I was at work last night till yeah. three, four in the morning at fucking Velvet, and I had to come here mm -hmm. and do this. Man, I have my, I literally have my two year old son sitting next to me in this fucking classroom mm -hmm. while I'm doing fucking schoolwork, like I'm fucking seventeen again. Yeah. And I was just like, bro, can you shut the fuck up? Like, and let this lady do what she needs to do so that we can get the fuck out of here. Like. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, bro, but I don't go to my mom's house when I leave here. I go to my house and then I, I have to pay bills for it. Yeah. And then I go to fucking work and then I go to another job and then I fucking come here. Yeah. And I was like, you see that I have to like, bro, chill. Like if I smack the shit out of you, like, but that was also pre mm -hmm. therapy and shit. Like I used to yeah. just be ready to just do dumb shit all the time. Someone had to say it, but yeah, but like that shit was crazy, bro. Like, but I don't think I would have gone through all of that if I didn't have, if my son wasn't sitting there, if there wasn't somebody sitting there that was like, okay, I have to do this because I have to be able to be in a better place for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. So when I graduated, like as soon as I graduated that program and I got my diploma, I, uh, I went immediately into trade school and got my like trade certifications and shit like that. And the trades paid off. Yeah. I mean, for the most part, yeah. yeah. It gave me a life skill for sure. Yeah. Yeah, and the opportunity is always there. I mean, yeah. yo, you you are a man with a job. Oh, for sure, yeah. Always with a job. I, mean, I can go. I can go anywhere in the world and find work. Yeah, um, I can. You know, and then also like, even the pandemic kind of showed me that I made a good choice with my choice of work because stuff's going up. Not even that. 
I still had a fucking job. Yeah. When everybody couldn't have a job. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, not, it, it was like a double-edged sword, though. It kind of mm-hmm. sucked because it was like, oh, you're a essential worker. Yeah. Take your ass to work still. Thank My God. But yeah, cool. they, you guys didn't really get, uh, the praises were just verbal and that was it. Yeah. It was such a like, work day. It was like, all right, yeah, thank, you. thank you. You know, my, my <laughs> was just, everybody else was just like collecting checks, chilling in the house. Like, you know, <laughs> this bitch, like, <laughs> thinking about myself, like, at the time I was working at the dealership. And yeah. So I was just like thinking about it, like, who the fuck is bringing their car to get serviced right now? Like, where are you even driving to, dude? Everything's closed. Like, what? Oh, it don't matter, man. Yeah, it don't matter. Is people are willing to pay. And then you got it. Like, yeah. they were all like, you had to wear those fucking masks all the fucking time. And like, mm-hmm. they were and then that hot room wearing that mask. Yeah, being in the Good shop. God. Yeah, it was crazy. Oh, you man. got all these smells and chemicals and shit going on. And now it's stunk. Yeah. And now it's stuck in a mask. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then none of the masks, like, so on a scientific level, even made a difference. <laughs> like, you know, like, people were out here wearing, like, cloths over their face like yeah it was good. you think that this fucking virus can't go through the fabric of that cloth you got over your nose right now bro like who you crying bro like nah, i was even saying crazy. right now what was i gonna say so what's two pieces of advice you'd give to someone looking to get therapy because uh because i gotta go eat breakfast feel oh you good you're coming in oh um, two pieces of advice i'll give somebody who wants to get therapy is mm-hmm. do it for you okay they don't do it for anybody else. Do it for you. And when you do do it, be meaningful about it. You can't go on, oh, and then the second piece is, more importantly, therapy isn't an answer. Yeah. Don't go into therapy thinking that they're going to give you the answers to your problems because they're not. They're going to give you solutions to work on your problems. That's it. You have to figure out your own shit still. So therapy is basically applying to go to work. No, therapy is basically, uh, it's like, like, you know, you haven't played a video game mm-hmm. and you get stuck on something that's hard mm-hmm. and then you click on the little question mark and it gives you like a little, you know, mm-hmm. helping hand. Yeah. That's what therapy is. Yeah. Therapy is that little helping hand. Yeah. To help you work through shit. It's a nudge at most, but you're still the one doing it. Yeah. Work. Oh, yeah. for sure. And yeah. if you're not ready to do it, then don't. Like, don't go to therapy because that's what I meant by do it for you. Like, don't go to mm-hmm. therapy because somebody else is telling you to go to therapy. Go to therapy because you're genuinely ready for therapy. Yeah. Because if you're not, you're just going to waste time and money. No, that makes sense. Um, What's one piece of advice that someone gave you that has been helpful in your mental health journey? Um... Well, the shit that my therapist told me about, like, find the logic in situations. For me personally, it's finding the logic in shit. Be logical about shit. That really changed the complexion of a lot of things for you. Yeah, because it helped me to not freak the fuck out about everything. Most people who know me know that I was the type of motherfucker where, like, I'd freak out. Mm -hmm. Like, to the point where, like, my hands are shaking. My hands shake now normally just all the time. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah. All right, well, this has been another episode of Mental Health Monday. You're my boy, Josh. Appreciate you for pulling up my body. Hey, hey. I'm, I'm very excited. We're about to do the A's. And, you know, you know, you know, you know. <laughs> like, subscribe, share. Appreciate y'all. Peace.